Maybe we can hear each other. Yep, Fine. I'm good. Okay. Good. So uh, let's start with the agenda. I don't think there's anybody else in waiting in this for this meeting. We had a big agenda, a lot of items. Um, so let's start with the minutes from last time, which I'm going to put up here. And uh, I assume the boards had a chance to look at these. And, yeah. Yeah. So the only comments and suggestions I have is uh, changing a little bit of wording around the Vax clinic. It's not a wasn't a Vax bus, Mike. That thing. Gotcha. And, uh, with with community health center and hosted by Norris Farms. Yeah, those are the only changes. All right. That I that I have. Mm -hmm. Hey, did you read them? You got to you yeah, read them? They look, they look good. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if there's no other changes. Can I uh, make a motion that we accept uh, with the, with the um, uh, edits, with the mm -hmm. changes? I second. Okay. okay. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Is it unanimous? <laughs> Stop that. All right. So, second topic, or we could move up Swamp Road if you want to, since we have everybody here from Swamp Road, and then we can get to all the other issues. Sure. Is that okay with the board? You bet. Yeah. All right. All right. So, let's move on to Swamp Road. And, uh, Mike, you got uh, the people of here. You see everybody's. Who's present? Yeah. Yes, yes, I've got the names, yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so 60 Swamp Road and also White Birch. Um, Mark's going to fill us in. I think I sent around um, uh, some, an email from Mark, a little bit of background. I can, just, but Mark, why don't you give us uh, a rundown of what's going on? So this is just a, uh, so just as a follow up, I mean, refresher is uh, back in late December, probably last day in December, I went out and did an inspection and there was a slew of things that needed to be fixed is the electrical outlets need to be looked at the roof was leaking. Um, I can't remember if the ceiling had fallen down at that point or not, but or part of the ceiling um, where it had been repaired before. Uh, there was some minor work that needed to be done in the bathroom. The uh, tub needed to be recocked. There was a hole in the wall. The sink was uh, drain was leaking. Uh, the window just needed to be recocked because there was a little bit of cold air coming in. Um, in the bedroom on the right, the window pane needed to be replaced. Uh, um, so some of that work has been completed. They they've had an electrician come out and look at the and fix most if not all of the issues with the with the outlets on both sides um there is a work one of the sub pumps in the basement is working there's a humidifier and dehumidifier in the basement because there's been a lot of excessive moisture in both on both sides um the people on the left have had multiple have multiple dehumidifiers running because of the you know the area is wet area and the moisture from the basement you know kind of comes up and ends up in the apartments. Um, so then, you know, we were, there was getting to be some mold growth. Um, the condensation on the right side is still a little high. I, from what I've been told, there's still some uh, mold issues. Um, so the electrical outlet, again, the electrical outlets have been fixed. The bathrooms, the drain's been fixed. The caulking on the tub needs to be reapplied a little bit. There's a couple of spots is that, you know, were cracked. It's minor. Um, and the hole that was patched just needs to be sanded down and painted over. So it's a non-absorbent surface because it's in the bathroom. There's going to be water, et cetera. Um, the roof still needs to be looked, uh, needs to be fixed. The ceiling in the living room needs to be fixed. Um, longer term, the kitchen floor needs to be the tiles need to be fixed so that it, you know, the code requires smooth, durable, easily cleanable. Sorry, sorry, um, sorry, sorry about that. Sorry. No, if you need me to slow down too, let me know. Um, um, no. 
So some of the tiles have been fixed, some are loose, um, and there's some gaps. So easily cleanable would mean no gaps because you know dirt, debris, et cetera, can get caught in those and it's not easily cleanable. And then the living room four kind of needs to be, does need to be redone. It's, uh, I'm not sure what kind of flooring it was, but it's the edges of the board have warped up um, kind of like a, it's not, it, they've warped. kind of warped in kind of like a U shape, not as bad as it sounds. It's only slightly warped. Um, I think it's due to the type of flooring that it is. Um, I don't know if it was meant to be washed as much as it was. And this is both, this was the, the floor was this way before Jen moved in. Um, it was the previous tenant that had, I'm guessing, washed the floor either in, I'm not sure what, the, what happened. Needless to say, it, you know, it's a tripping hazard and it's hard to keep clean because the ed edges are raised a little bit. You know, there's no easy way to clean it, sweep it, et cetera. Um, so Mrs. Reed has been working on getting quotes and I think I forwarded some of those to you, Fran. Mm -hmm. um, but it had, you know, as of, I'd have to look at the, let me pull up the letter that I had sent out. Long, long story short is that, you know, we're beyond the 30 days that the code requires. Um, probably even more so than that, if you take into account the roof being issue on the other side. So I did mm -hmm. issue a letter to uh, a fine letter um, as required by code uh, for each uh, $100 for each day out of compliance. And that's an ongoing mm -hmm. alley. It was uh, 14 days. So $1,400 is what I had issued um, this past Thursday. I'm not sure if Mrs. Reed has received it by mail yet, but I did email her a copy and let her know about this meeting so she could come and talk to you guys. Mm -hmm. It's good. Um, is that everything in a nutshell, more or less? Yeah. So we have outstanding repairs that are long overdue. And you have sent out a fine letter with a deadline, right? Or with, is that? Uh... The fine's ongoing. So the repairs need to be, you know, the, it's just that it's each day of non-compliance is $100. Um, the next step would be to bring it to housing court. Mm -hmm. You get a, a judge to issue an order to correct. Okay. So, board, do you have anything, any comments so far, questions? Mike? Oh. Let me unmute you, unmute myself. And yeah, um, Mark, I just wanted to ask a couple of questions. Um, so, uh, the, the, obviously, the most concerning are, are the, um, you know, things like elect, electrical issues. Uh, initially, you said that they were mostly completed, but then you thought maybe they might be completed. Are the electrical issues? As far as my play? last, I knew they were all completed. Jen shaking her head no. So okay. there may be there may be some issues yeah. that mm -hmm. wasn't there a window issue too. Hold yeah, on, so, hold on, please right. one at a time. Um, yeah. Let me finish. The, the electrical yeah. issues. Um, uh, so we're needing a. Um, for COG um, uh, uh, inspection to happen. So what had happened, so the uh, Mrs. Reed hired an electrician to come out and she, they went through the whole house, uh, both sides. That same day, the electrical inspector happened to be doing the inspection. Um, before the, the electrical inspector from the FERCOG left before the electrical work was done. I do not believe that they've been back since. Um, so we might just need a sign off from the electrical inspector you're saying? Yeah, so ultimately at some point the electrical inspector will need to come and kind of verify the work was okay. done. Um, I'm unsure what what the outstanding, uh, if there's any other outstanding electrical issues. Well, I'm, I'm gonna be interested to hear from the tenants as soon as uh, we're done um, you know, from, from this angle. Um, so then um, um, the, the moisture issue, the water downstairs, so the, uh, we've got two sump pumps working 24 seven. There's one sub pump that's currently running um, on the left side, I believe. The one on the right isn't working. I believe that's unplugged because the dehumidifier is plugged in on that side. Um, or well, last I knew the dehumidifier was plugged in on that side. Um, 
to try to help with the moisture issue for the whole, you know, the whole building. Sure. The sub pumps, the way that the foundation is set is just, if you just picture a rectangle, there's actually, a, for lack of a better word, a moat around that the water collects. So the sub pumps on either end have a channel connecting them. So if one's not working, the water's at least being pulled out of the other one. I'm not saying it's optimal, but it it's functional. Um, and one of the, there it, but there still is a lot of moisture in there, whether the sub pumps running or not, it's a wet area. Mm -hmm. Sure. So um, um, uh, effectiveness is questionable, but you know, there's one pump running, one pump is not running just because of a lack of um, uh, power for it. Is that right? Electrical power. Outlet. An outlet. The pump may not be functional. I understand. All right, um, dehumidifier. Um, so we, as Fran was uh, framing, um, we have uh, a, a number of um, things that have been completed, a, an outstanding uh, list of things um, that uh, is required um, yet to be done, um, which precipitated the, the $100 fine. Um, and so um, I wonder, do, is that a list that is in, in, in writing somewhere? Can we, um I'll yeah, so, that. Mm -hmm, go ahead. yeah so i'll forward you um the letter that i sent out and a de i detailed um the letter i sent out i detailed each issue and okay. then i also inc included a citation a copy of the code highlighted so that because the code can be confusing so okay i concluded okay. the citation so she mrs Reed knew exactly what i was trying to get at excellent thanks mark that's that's it for me i don't have any other questions Becky, you have any questions? Okay. Um, before I pass, there's a, there was also a, a window issue that has that been addressed? No. No. Okay. So, when we go into tenants first, and then Mrs. Reed can uh, answer to the citations. Um, Jen, do you want to go first? Sure. Um, Mrs. Reed had several people come in for inspections and inspections after inspections of people coming to give her bids. I want to say she's probably had seven people here just because they don't give her all the bids. That's not a me problem, obviously. Um, between the roof, inside work, um, the floors in the living room, like Mark said, it's trip hazard. The window, she's had several people come in. Um, I was told from the contractor that she was supposedly hiring Randy himself, that there's certain codes now, guidelines that you're supposed to go by when you're replacing, fixing windows and stuff. And he, I don't know, this is what he said. I, like I said, I'm not a contractor. So, mm -hmm. um, temp, you know, the, these are one pane glass windows and they're very old. And the last guy that she just had came in here said, this is rot, rot, wood is rotting. So you probably better off to replace it. She said, we just need to put the piece of glass in there. What was she had measured was the wrong size. So we told her that. Mm. And so that was supposed to be getting taken care of eventually. She does not hardly ever give me a 24 hour notice. Mm -hmm. And if I mm -hmm. have an appointment, she, she kind of gets upset to be honest. You know, mm -hmm. like I, mm -hmm. even if she, does say, hey, can I come in tomorrow? And I'll be like, well, at, she'll call me at night. Can I come tomorrow? I'll be like, well, I have an appointment. She'll be like, well, I have to get the work done. I mm -hmm. get that, but I have an appointment, you know, doctor's mm -hmm. appointment or whatever case may be. Um, can we make it another day or whatever? And then mm -hmm. she'll go make the, you know, I'll make that time frame and I'll sit here waiting. And then she, either her or the person forgets or doesn't show up. And I sit here and wait all time. Okay, um, so we have a list um, that Mark yeah, already mentioned and we, I, most of the items you mentioned are on that list, I believe. Yeah. Um, Windows, doors, flooring, the roof, yeah. uh, their light in the bathroom. I had mentioned it when the electrician was here. She said she was gonna get a new one and take care of it. We'll be in the middle of a shower and it sh shuts right off by itself and nobody's touching it. And then you'll be standing there brushing your teeth. It'll come on or off while you're standing there 
Can I ask, um, can I ask Jen, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I, I just want to, uh, don't, don't let an opportunity to pass. Um, so this is something currently happening? Yes, and it's been happening since the electrician was here and I mentioned it. Okay, mm -hmm. so there are still some uh, outstanding electrical issues that yep. need to be addressed. Yep. Thank you. Yep, okay. thank you. Uh -huh. um, Sandra, do you, you don't live in the building, She don't right? live here, but she no. does come. Okay, so, um, so Mrs. Reed, you've heard um, and seen the citations. You are currently being fined. This isn't kind of a repeat sad situation. We had to go through this with you on the campground in the past where we had a long list and they were overdue and you, you said you'd get to them and get to them and they never happened until we started fining and there was money involved. So this is you know something we want to avoid. Obviously, it was much better when you make repairs as required by the code in a timely manner. It's going to be costly if you don't get this done. I just want to preface the, that um, with uh, my comments with that. So uh, I, I hope you understand this is a serious situation again. So we don't, it didn't need to get to this, but let's see what you can do to fix it. Go ahead. Yes, Mrs. Reed. Not, yes. You're, oh, on, mute you're on mute. Oh, sorry. It might unmute be yourself. Her. It might be at her end. Yeah. Can you un hold on? Down the bottom left corner. Right she's, no, no, she's okay. She's okay. Go ahead, Mrs. Reed. Okay. First of all, I want to tell you this one. The thing was uh, what Sandy say it's not true. No, not Sandy. I'm talking. I saw her. So I just said, Jen. Because many times, actually, I won. I told everyone every time. You know, if the smart landlord, as soon anything broken, you should be fixed. First of all, from beginning, when all the tenants come out, I want to renovate the whole my place so I can sell that. So I start where I have a 10 column support underneath to fix it. And then after that, I have the floor. And that time, I think my tenant left like a May 1st. And then Jane come in and said, you know, I have people kick me out. I don't have place to go. So I come in, I said, I had to fix the thing first. And then she said that, you know, beside that, um, my, I said the floor, Thing at that thing, it's just like a you know floating floor, vinyl floating floor. Mm -hmm. It little bit like a separate, a little bit you know, but still like a no, it's not rotten or anything. So mm -hmm. I said, but we had to fix the floor first before you come in, and then he she said that my son do the floor, and my older son do the roof. And I said, but the roof is just done. I just live alone, but but I just had it done two years ago. Mm -hmm. okay. So, can I, can I can I can I can I interject? Um, I, I think Mrs. Reed, what's going to be helpful and and move the issue along for us tonight is going to be to hear what steps you're taking to oh okay repair these issues and what do you see as a timeline for that. Okay, I look at, I just received this one, uh, the, um, the paper that uh, one I re registered yesterday, on uh, a regular one yesterday, and today I received it from Mark. And I saw that the, um, I have uh, uh, my, when the, about the roof first, that I have, the people who did that like less than two years ago. So I called him, I said, what the reason it uh, looked like that? He said that he told me because the, uh, what you call that? What do mm -hmm. you think that, yes, I, I forgot to call that. 
Sanitation. It's not the roof itself. Yeah, insulation, right? Sanitation. Yeah, he said that insulation that uh, somehow too close to the uh, surface, the surface where the the thing that you have a home, so the air circulation can move yes. around. So yes. there, so he said that, that the reason he come, he glide up there, that's what he said. So I have called two more people come and to check to see what the reason. And then one guy said, yeah, that's a part of that, the other part maybe don't have a, a rich band. Um, mm -hmm. so it's just a small part. So I said, before I want to fix that, I had to know what's going on. And then um, he said that the rich brand there, and then the older part is that the roof, uh, instead of planning something, have to go like straight line. So mm -hmm. the little, uh, that's why sometimes like a, even have a rent or something, but nothing happened, but sometimes, mm -hmm. So I think that uh, because of have uh, some nail, maybe they did not um, seal on the nail in there. So that's why like a slow leak and go slowly into the wood until don't have enough capacity to hold the water anymore. It's right. like running down. Let me, so let, me what, actually, let me ask, ask if I can step in again, Mrs. Reed. Yeah, go ahead, Mike. Yes. So we, can, we can get down, bogged down in mm, you know, and every, you know, set of details. I think what would be helpful for us is yeah. to understand what steps you're taking to have licensed oh. repair. Hold on, please. To have licensed repair people who are, are adequately trained to, to make the repairs that are on that letter that you received from Mark. Yeah, I have focus two people. On, focus Come on. Yeah, because I want to see before you fix. I don't want just like a last time the guy fix it, but mm -hmm. doesn't doesn't look good. It's like a still absolutely before just a little bit live come out and now like a where the two drywall meet, you know, uh, the tap go down. So I want to be exactly that's when I call three people. This is really and you, have, you have Mark's letter in your hand. Yeah, right here. Can you take a look at that letter, please. And yes. take a look at the list of things that Mark has on that list. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And that maybe mm -hmm. the, forget about the roof. I do other things, okay? There, there's the a roof lot of that you know that already. There's a lot yeah, of I did. I did. Um, I have the um, entry. You know, I, I think that to me, I don't know what gender the first time. Many things. I did tell everyone, as you come in, as soon as you see anything, give me a call. That will be, you know, smart for the landlord to do. She didn't never call me anything. Suddenly I had the letter from we, Mark. We, well, we've been dealing okay. with tenants before this group and before that group. And this, this goes back um, some, some years for 60 Swamp Road. So mm -hmm. um, it's not news yeah. to you or to us. So mm -hmm. uh, uh, Frank, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, no, I think, uh, Mrs. Reed, you, you have known minimally since December that these items need to be repaired. Mark Bushy did an inspection and let you know what was going on there. And then there was an inspection by the building inspector. But as, Mark, as Mike just mentioned, this, this is not new. These things have been sitting there in need of repair for years. And you have not I done did anything. have three people doing that. Yes, then but I somehow the those, those people aren't competent. Somehow the repairs, I don't know if you're not paying them or they're not doing No, I the first one to... I pay a lot of money. He had license uh, insurance. Okay. okay. And then okay. the second Can we, we, do, we don't want to get bogged down in the details. Right now the issue is when are you going to repair them and what is the order we I think Mark has a priority order in that list you sent right Mark starting with roof starting with electric yeah I didn't necessarily the letter that I sent out I didn't have a exact priority. list I mean okay. the biggest thing in my mind that needs to be fixed first is the roof then the ceiling the and the, the living mold. room slash kitchen 
than mold. the floor, probably in that order, just for, you know, because you don't want to, if the roof's not fixed, obviously you don't want to fix the ceiling because then, you know, et cetera. Oh, right. Mold. Can you uh, it looks like Jen is trying to get her, um, her voice heard. Hi, thank you. Yeah. Um, what I had moved in on May 20th because of the situation at hand, yes. I moved back out May 30th. I moved back in two months later for her to do repairs, and she still hadn't done any repairs at that point. But mm -hmm. I was in a homeless situation, so I'm, I do want to give you that heads up, and Mark knew that too. You know, um, I have told her. She tells me I don't tell her. I'm going to have to email everything to her, in other words, because she seems like she remember sometimes and not always i'm not trying to be rude you know mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. so i'm trying my best i've been working with her as much as i can i've accommodated so many times of just the other day nine o'clock in the morning nine fifteen in the morning she calls me by nine thirty they were here without mm -hmm. no notice mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know 15 mm -hmm. minutes okay. later okay and i would like a date like the roof is going to get started to get worked on monday the 7th you know air and, and the doors and windows because i get stuck my my doors get totally stuck where you have to force yourself to get in and out at some points not all the time but at some points right. you have to yank on it so i just okay. need these things fixed windows and doors and stuff mm -hmm. and yeah, my I think they're, they're on the list aren't they mark some of those things yeah yep. so mrs reed you have a complete list maybe not quite yeah and those things need to get done. You, the longer you take, the more it's going to cost you in fines. That, do, you, do you understand that? Yes, but I don't know why that, that I just well, please, you didn't tell me. Please. Can, can Mark come to see the, the place tomorrow with me? <laughs> you can Mark do that because when she notice. called me? Market, market. Not, not tomorrow, market. but anytime soon. You you don't really need to go in. You have the list of things to fix. You should be getting your contractors lined up. ASAP. I did. ASAP. I can't keep on come. Let, let me tell you this, okay? Mm -hmm. I fixed on the window, just set one. That at that time when she moved in, we put the uh, window, just one, the top top window, the one push up and down, and the one who fixed it, because of that one crack like this, but not like open or anything. So we changed it. We, at that time, we didn't know we use plexiglass, because mm -hmm. we thought plexiglass, you know, and people don't break all the time. But then Mark said, plexiglass is not compliance. So we, so I bought, I ordered, but that, Three times I come in and then she always like her son had to go. What she said, like, but actually backwards. She said her son had to go to doctor or the throw up or something. Two times I had people really difficult to have people come with nowadays, you know, but mm -hmm. always something happened. So she said backwards, she said, I just come in. You don't get little, well, you know, we're, we're not going to hash out all of the little details. You have a list. Yeah, you, that's why you know I, I said do. I have people come. Not like yes, a, I can have a letter don't... from people come. And she said that. And then she told that person, actually two people. OK, one time I have the one person who been fixing my building internal from three of them, the home building, that he really qualified. He just come in, he changed, but she said, I book up until some, uh, you know, fall. But because mm -hmm. of you, I work with you a long time. You're really good person. So I work Sunday for you, okay? Because just do the, mm -hmm. the, the thing in the kitchen and the urban room. He's a floor guy. Mm -hmm. And then as soon as he come up to he he picks the uh, he uh, measure he said do you have a license this one you need license and insure and also the guy who put the glass you know to fix it and help cut from from um 
later, she I said, I'm going to call and ask them, cut that tomorrow, we go up there. You know, I I can do that. But she said, no, they don't open, they don't cut it. I called them, they said they cut it. Okay. So that one, they so said, they, she, you it's should just check. amazing. Yes, well, the person who you're going to have to please with this is actually Mark, because Mark knows the yes. code. And yes. so if, if Mark has cited you for something, he would need to make sure that it's done right yeah. okay, on our behalf of the Board of Health. And we're going to hold you to that, plain and yes. simple. So yes. um, you should not be arguing with the tenants as much as talking with them and yes. making sure that they're, they're uh, allowing you into the house with notice and also with Mark make sure that there's a schedule for fixing these repairs that is satisfactory okay anything short of that and you're going to be fine okay yes mm -hmm. okay do you understand that yes i've been okay. you know landlord so, for for what you call 35 years mm -hmm. that the first person that you know and i can learn you know, you want to know about her. Her friend told me that she did her all the time. No. All the two landlords no. no. didn't no. tell. Okay. No, well, please. you know, the Just, landlord tenant issue is another course, thing. Yeah. And you have run into, this isn't the first time you've had problems. And uh, the tenants have had problems with you. Well, we remember not too long ago. I don't want to rehash You know that. who that person? I remember that person well. Mrs. Reed, Mrs. Reed, let us help you. Okay, let us help yes. you. If you want, yeah. to, here, you want to get want out you to... these fines, then as Fran was saying, as Mark has been saying, read that letter, follow through with the repairs as quickly as possible. Those are the minimal housing codes hmm. for this area, but they must be met. Please make those repairs yes. as quickly as possible so we can stop fining you every single day. That's our mission. To get mm -hmm. back off the fines again. If your mission is the same, please see to it that certified people get to the house, get the repairs yes. done, and put this behind you. Okay, is that clear? Yeah. All right, thank you. But I want to see that I, when I fix it, why the door, I, I fix that, and she said, work fine. And next day, I come in, something weird about wet on the tide on the floor and the door mm -hmm. really weird because the, let me tell you this one, okay? It just like this, in some when winter time, the air really dry, right? I had to put humidifier inside my, my house on the pupil and the door, okay. But then you can see that start crap, that the new thing, we call the door dry. You know, in winter, you can see she put really high heat because she just wear like this all the time. So the dog crack, but why in the world that on wet floor all the time? A two to three times I come in, just mop. So that they contradict. Please, you, under, you understand what I said, right? Yes, mm -hmm. I did. Please focus mm -hmm. on that. That's what we're going to yes. focus on. Yeah. And that's those yeah, fine. Have... Stay in place until the repairs mm -hmm. are completed. Yeah. to meet the minimum housing requirements, okay? You're a landlord, you have responsibilities to take care mm -hmm. of your I know that, that's yeah. why the first time I don't want she come in at all. She yes, but, like me. but again, to because go back I said, to I'm that. going to fix the place after the older guy come out. Yeah. I try to stop fixing. Answer, because the that, that is not her fault. You had to come in. Yeah, at that point, you should have said the building is not rented until we fix it. So right. that's that's an error. And if that's going to be- She said that this, the third relative, the one who worked on I this understand. thing, that's why I, I let her in. I understand, She's but you, will, you, you, you are the effect. owner. You have every yeah. right Yeah, say, I know. I am not going to feel sorry for people anymore. Well, you, you feel, feel sorry you for them. Better. You've been doing this for 30 you, you years. Help, right? You don't help the people when you put them in a building that's not okay. safe and sanitary, okay? All right. Our next agenda item, I think, is right, Fran? Yeah. At that time, it's so, not that, that late. Yeah. Okay. Well, well, but Mrs. Reed, gonna... I left for two months for you to do repairs, and you didn't do them. I'm sorry, people, but I needed to make sure. Two months, hardly anything. You said that's okay. And, 
All right. Okay, we're okay. not gonna. That's Thank enough. You. That's okay. We're not gonna argue. I'm gonna make sure I, I'm applying to the lawyer too, so that way everybody knows. Yeah, I'm yeah. I, okay. I know that about you now. Maybe you, talk, people you, told okay. me about Thanks you. Coming to the meeting. In the meantime, our responsibility is to make sure that yeah. housing to fix is it, safe yeah. and clean and meets the code. So that's what we're trying to do with with you, Mrs. Reed, and so the tenants who are currently there have a safe, clean house to live in. Thank okay? you. So we're gonna. Thank you. For we're gonna hope me. you stay in touch with Mark yep. on this because and I can talk to Mark is, uh, Okay. Yeah. And um, for you, for Sandra and um, Jen, you can also stay in touch with Mark on this. Okay. Yeah. Please, please do. Yeah. Thanks. All right. So yeah. we'll move on then to another topic, which is schools in town and COVID and all that stuff. So, what about the campground, yeah. sir? You didn't know oh, the campground. campground. Oh. Sandy's here. Are we there at the campground, Mark? Not, oh, we have we done any campground is not open. Is my right, the campground is not open and the works as far as I know, the work still needs to be done uh, for the basement. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. okay. It's a similar situation that has to be fixed too before you can open. Or yeah. you will get a permit. And we will be doing oh. another inspection of the campground, obviously, just like we do every year. So, every year yeah i know that yes. yeah so stay you you might as well do it all correctly as soon as possible very good thank okay. you thank you for coming to the meeting yeah. thanks jen sandra thanks okay, okay. Great. So, so i think when it comes to um the town right now and covid um mm -hmm. I, obviously we've got some um you know Happy, happy reports. Um, mm -hmm. Our um, current count is down Same. to uh, two um, people. Uh, I have to get to those to you, Fran. Mm -hmm. uh, those yeah. are new today. Both of them showed up on Williamsburg's website, but um, uh, they really? were actually uh, uh, West Waitley folk. So, um, so that's, um, but that's it. And so we obviously have uh, a, a sea change um, in mm -hmm. terms of everything from masking to, um, mm -hmm. you know, uh, uh, bus, um, you, know, you know, stopping or, or saying that kids don't need to have masks on bus anymore, um, or um, mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of, um, there's, there's reason to be optimistic and uh, reason co for concern. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yes, and uh... Yeah, I noticed that there was only one case in the last two weeks, up to last uh, Thursday, the 20th. So uh, it's good. It's lately it's good. doing yeah. quite well, which can inform our decision what we're going to be recommending for the town sure. buildings and uh, town hall in particular. So I just wanted to report uh, local VAX clinic farm workers. The second one went well, too. We had about 30 uh, farm workers got shots. When and, was uh, that, Grant? 24th was the second one, about 25 or 30. I had to leave a, an hour early. So that was uh, nice. And uh, there's plan for a third one when uh, a majority or a good bunch of the um, seasonal workers show up. And Mark, I wanted to ask you something. Did you see the, uh, the sort of CO for the uh, North Farms? The what? The what? Oh, the uh, the certificate of occupancy for oh. farm worker housing, farm labor camps, it's called. <laughs> I've seen a couple um, come through. You have? Okay. Yeah. Just want to make sure you're, you're getting them. So, yeah. Good. So, we have, I think, at least two or three farms that have uh, live on farm, farm laborers that come in seasonally, typically Jamaicans. So, we want to make sure that's. Housing is good. I have no problem with Norse. I'm sure that's good. Uh, I think the only question might be uh, Ma Mannheim. <laughs> Mannheim Farm. Not, not, not Chang? I don't think anybody's living at Chang Farms yeah. anymore after that. <laughs> I hope not anyway. So good. So that's we that's did, my report on that. Just real quick, um, Fran. We did get a, uh, today we actually got a letter on 
Chang Far, uh, yeah, Chang Farm. I haven't gone through it. I'm just looking at it now. Looks like oh, they really? have some stuff to correct. Really? Okay. As uh, wait, for OSHA stuff or what? Is it living from DEP. The, what is it? It's uh, we got a letter from DEP. I'll forward it to you so you make sure you, so you can oh, see. Oh, DEP. Too. Okay. Yeah, DEP mm -hmm. did a inspection there, and there were. Mm -hmm. 19 violations. Oh, dang. Oh, man. Okay. I think you do. You have uh, job security, Mark. Yeah. They've got some work ahead of them, apparently. <laughs> Let us know because this is also a perennial almost. Looks like the state's is... working on it, though. Yeah. yeah. No. Yeah. The, yeah. yeah. States, uh, states on them. And likewise for the farm labor camp housing, that's not our uh, inspection, that's the states. So, but. We, we can follow up as needed. Um, good. So any, any other questions about that? Um, so let's move on to the ARPA fund. If, if there's any updates on that, wait a minute. Who's, who's got the radio on? You, apparently. <laughs> I don't hear it. Really? Oh, OK. <laughs> I think it's feedback from Mike. Do you have a speaker? Um, say again. I think we're hearing feedback from your. Um, um, I'll, I'll go ahead. From who? Uh -huh. From mine? I, I don't have any music going on here. No, it's no. But I think it's feedback from when somebody talks from your speakers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see that. Yeah, I just checked the speaker here, and it's only. Uh, it's just my computer speakers. So. Nothing there. Okay. So anyway, back to you. Have any updates from um, us on that? The, uh, we were supposed to meet on Monday, but it wasn't posted. And so it was canceled. So we still have to set up mm -hmm. um, when we're going to meet. Um, okay. mm -hmm. I can, um, I'm happy to report that the structure seems to have been solidified. So um, we, um, we'll be discussing um, timeline um, for submitting initial recommendations, project evaluation criteria, and we're looking at non-town government and town government stakeholders. Um, so mm -hmm. that, that, I, I'm glad to see things are sort of getting into uh, sort of a, as broad and um, an inclusive and approach as possible, but also um, with um, criteria so that um, we can start with reasonable pro um, projects to consider. Yeah, um, make, make sure we get the police uh, solar panel roof on that and charging station. <laughs> um, so Fran, I mean, so I'm, did you have that on our list? Yeah, but I was it was on the revised list. I think I sent a month um, ago. Because that I'm so that's so neat because I I guess I forgot. I guess I didn't remember seeing that. Um, okay, I'll, I'll resend. Yep, yeah, please do. And I'm I'm so glad you're saying that because I've been extra interested in um, advocating for um, mm -hmm. just that kind of thing. You know what what I was thinking about is, and I I would love to hear feedback and uh, mm -hmm. uh, from whoever's on this call, but um, you know, there, there are a lot of different ways we as a town can approach this fund, these funds. But one of them is that because it's a large amount of money, we could do something that, and maybe not with all of it, but we could do something we normally wouldn't do that would be really beneficial to the yeah. whole town. And, you know, I'd mentioned before, I love the idea of creating walk bike infrastructure I still love that idea, yay, Mark. <laughs> and I'm, I'm definitely going to advocate for that. And the mm -hmm. other thing I was thinking about is rooftop solar for the town offices because mm -hmm. uh, it's such a big flat roof. It's something that I'm assuming we, the town people have to, we have to pay for the electricity and energy for the building anyway. Mm -hmm. um, climate change mm -hmm. <laughs> and no, it's and, it's, and it's also um it's not deforestation 
you know, the, the, I've been on a lot of calls recently about this issue of the fact that uh, industrial solar is cutting down huge swaths of Massachusetts forest to put up solar and it's really horrible and horrific. And so this would just be such a wonderful um, sort of statement as a town. Um, mm -hmm. It would set a precedent. It would be a good thing to do. I mean, if yeah, I, I had to <laughs> walk bike or that, I'd say walk bike. <laughs> but anyway, so um, yeah, go ahead, Mike. Well, I just want to support um, that. I, I hope it wouldn't have to be one or the other. Um, I think those two are, are great um, steps forward. Um, mm -hmm. Cool. I, I'll, maybe I'll, I'll come up with a, maybe I'll write up some kind of official looking proposal thing <laughs> that well, would, I, would, I would win over everybody. That. What's that? Yeah, I already hinted at it with that revised uh, list there. And, um, I obviously I'll send that around again in case. But... Enough. Please do, because I'm sorry, Fran, I didn't look at it closely enough. Well, I you're not meeting until next week, but off. yeah, you have a chance to submit it then next week, yeah. right? Yeah. Or whenever Perfect. your meeting is. Yeah. Yeah, because I think that is what a, a good chunk of ARPA money could be used for, right? even if it's just to leverage more state or other monies for solar. Right, right, and, exactly, yeah. You know, that's, um, but Mike and, and, keep, and Mark, if you have any suggestions for spending ARPA money that we haven't already put in a list, I'll send it around to everybody so you guys can harp it and then we can, um, okay. Okay. Um, uh, Mark, uh, Mike, it, you, I can't hear you. I'll try again. Um, okay. Um, uh, that um, I've seen the list and I think, um, you know, if we have, you know, a voice in there with a whole bunch of other people, we want mm -hmm. to like razor point that. And I mm -hmm. think two major initiatives um, would be, you know, the, the park and uh, the ride and walk and the solar uh, for the town buildings. Okay, I'll, so, I'll write something up that's really, um, eloquent and pretty and um, incredibly <laughs> motivating and we'll just knock everyone's socks off so and I'll say, share it with you before yeah. mm, okay good um, so yeah do that and send it to us and we'll take a look okay. at it and I'll send the uh, the list around again but, cool. um, and let's move on to uh, our recommendations then since we have uh, had in place basically some COVID restrictions for use of town hall, and particularly town, uh, uh, particularly town hall, but also all the other town buildings, which now can probably be loosened. Um, so, and I think I sent around uh, something from the town administrator there about it, but basically I think folks are looking at whether you know, we have we have a vaccination requirement in place for town hall events. We have a mask mandate for town hall events. We have a, a um, distance requirement and capacity limits in place for town hall events. Some of those are in place for um, regular town hall buildings. And um, we should probably think about revising that from mandatory to advisory just to go along with uh, the case counts dropping pretty low. And I'm going to share with you what we have in place because um, I forgot about it too. <laughs> Been a while. But this is what we advise as of, let me get rid of this, <clears throat> in January. So for town hall, can you all see this? Yep. So we had, you know, capacity limits, air purification, da -da -da, masks, social distance, that fully vaccinated, that's two shots. This basically parallels a, um, a lot of the other venues that were having events at that point. Okay. And um, keeping a list of attendees so we could case, uh, uh, contact trees. And for building, municipal building use, we we had a recommendation that first and foremost that meetings should be, would be held more safely if they were remote. 
which it was only a recommendation. And for in-person meetings, municipal meetings, um, et cetera, we had a capacity limit, masks, distancing, air purification, attendee logs, and no one with symptoms in the buildings, which we, we COVID symptoms in the buildings. So um, just by, uh, for informational purposes, the, 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 there's been a bill, I think it already passed or is about to be passed that will allow remote meetings to continue until July 15th. So anyway. Pass today, right? Yeah, pass today. Mm -hmm. So I think we're, we're good in that way, but we should talk a little bit about what we wanna recommend now, given uh, the, the diminished case counts and um, et cetera. Um, incident rates lately is very low, less than 1%. So, yeah, I'll let you guys discuss, or let's all discuss, but my recommendation is that we make it advisory instead of mandatory, which we, we did for town for these, um, some of these, or at least with masking, um, that we, however, still, and the state does this also, still strongly recommends mask indoors. I would couple that, the advisory recommendation with, um, instead of a mask requirement, with a strong recommendation for masking. Yeah, it seems like one of the things that would be good to specify is who it's most important to be. Yes. Mm -hmm. and I mean, yeah. I suspect people are going to know, but to iterate it or, you know, repeat it is good. So people yeah. who with known exposure is people who have been sick, what, yeah. five days? Um, yeah. Uh, and people who have um, weakened immune mm -hmm. system. Yeah. And here's the state's advisory, which is pretty easy to, well, it's a little convoluted, but I think we can go with this, which is basically, um, People should still be wearing masks if you are obviously um, not vaccinated or you have a medical underlying medical condition, comorbidity, they used to call it, or weakened or immune compromised. So you have a weakened immune system. For those folks in those categories, one more, the category. Mass hmm? one more category is that if you've actually tested positive. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right, and um, yeah, tested positive and you're coming back from isolation, Five days. right? Five days, so. I, I think we could make it much more succinct than this though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we could, well, <laughs> we should. Um, we, like, like we recommend people be vaccinated and boosted. Um, so you don't have like, you know, rather than that whole, um, paragraph, we, we the Board of Health recommends everyone um, eligible be vaccinated and boosted right. rather than all that stuff. Um, yeah. we, um, and then we recommend people with, um, with vulnerable immune systems. So age makes your immune system vulnerable. Um, yeah. uh, diabetes says, so you can just say with vulnerable immune systems, you wouldn't have to say all of that. <laughs> Yeah, no, 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 right. Yeah. Um, um, or people who have tested positive in the past five days or, um, yeah. Yeah, no, I can, we can uh, shorten this obviously, Straight but the key, key, key paragraphs are the second one here and the, the fifth, uh, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. So, so we want to make our, we want to make it a, an advisory recommendation. So mask mandates, in town buildings are gone, but yeah. we strongly urge, uh, recommend actually, um, masking for folks that are immunocompromised, have had COVID and or have cold morbidities or are unvaccinated. Correct. Right. One thing I, just Mark, two cents. Um, yeah. I would, well, my opinion is, is I would still recommend masks for people in, indoors. I know the numbers have come down but in the back of my head, I wonder how much of that is home testing versus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. you know, 
I think that should be our overall uh, stance too, that we, yeah, we still like, strongly right. recommend masks indoors, period. But I, I mean, we even say specifically that Mark, um, uh, we, you know, we're all glad to see the numbers coming down, but as we've already seen in the last two years, we don't want to um, jump the gun and you can come up with better terms than that, but um, let like a wait and see would not be a bad thing. <laughs> no, no, well, the schools are gonna wait and see. Um, they're gonna wait another week or so to see, but you know, the masks have come off from buses now and they'll right. probably be I mean, gone. For, in terms yeah. of, not in terms of how we create mandate versus recommendation, but just that we throw it out there that for people who are just trying to decide whether they're gonna wear a mask or not, we say, mm -hmm. Erring on the side of caution is something that would be good. Yeah, how about we say, we strongly recommend wear mask wearing indoors. Excuse me? We strongly recommend mask wearing indoors, but um, but we are requiring masks for people that are have um, uh, COVID, um, ha are unvaccinated, are immunocompromised, are um, what else? The other category, uh, underlying medical conditions, something like that. Hello, my daughter would like to talk. Um, okay, uh, this? hold on. Is I, um, uh, First, uh, we'll let the board start, and then yeah, you can um, chime well, in. Um, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. But in addition to that, Fran, um, um, just something about since we're sending out the recommendations right now. And given that everything is shifting right now, um, I think Mark, it would be good to emphasize Mark's point because people might be like ready to not wear masks. I think a mm -hmm. reminder that that we within the next few weeks we might we might see nothing, or we might see a surge if people drop their guard again because that's what we've seen before. So just sort of that. Um, oh yeah, we have that. We had that in the last, all of our advisories that if yeah. um, you know situation COVID situation changes, we will revise these. So right, but why that don't sense I, of information. Yeah. Why don't I draft something up? Unless you want to, Beck, and uh, you have you seen this too, right? So, and um, why don't you write it and then one, I'll edit it? <laughs> one there's um, town employees that are, you know, um, that work every day in the buildings. So if we, we leave that, I mean, the recommendation would be to still map up and, um, oops. Mike, just so you know, you're a little, you're quiet. So I don't know if they can hear you. Oh, Mike. Just quickly that, um, I, I would like to see something in there um, just um, referring to um, masking um, uh, with a with a um, an eye towards the immunocompromised. That we have mm -hmm. a subset of our community that are immunocompromised for a variety of different reasons. Masking to take care of that um, population is is important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. Yeah, well, it would be mentioned in there. It's, they'd call it a weakened immune system. They've changed their wording somewhat, but we could call it immunocompromised, et cetera, in my opinion. You know, if, if I write something or Beck writes something up, we can uh, take it apart. Yeah, and, uh, I'll, Fran, why don't you write and then I'll edit and I'll send it back to everybody. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. And, you know, we don't have this doesn't have to go out tomorrow, but we'll just okay. let people know. So for the event space, um, okay. yeah, let me see event space. We have updated mask town hall. So the town hall would be, I mean, basically it's gonna be for all of our buildings, right? and all of our events. So um, I think uh, we still have the air purification in there. I don't think we're gonna require 
um, capacity limits. Do you? Um, no, I, I, I are. Um, or social distancing. I wish I had air purification. Mike, go ahead. That might I had more faith in air purification. Um, then I'd be fine with 100% um, uh, capacity. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, yeah. Just worry okay. about, you know, are, are we really looking at products that are actually doing what they um, um, profess to do? Yeah, actually, all, all the town rooms that I've been in, yes. including um, the auditorium, the small town hall room, and uh, the rooms down at the town offices have pretty capable um, purifiers in there, pretty large <laughs> capacity. And unfortunately, there was a bank um, on NPR piece about how um, a lot of what has been sold, um, yeah, exaggerated effectiveness. But anyway, um, yeah, so, I, you know, if you want to go to one hundred percent, I don't know. Can we can we go to seventy five percent? How would it make any sense to just write a reminder about um, close quarters and um, talking face to face? increases risk of transmission. And so rather than being a number thing, have it be have it more just like a reminder that crowded spaces increase the risk. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. so does that yeah. make sense? Okay. Yeah, so that we can uh, basically get rid of most of this wording. And like, I still like the um, air purification and uh, this distancing we can, the negative tests we were not having in there anymore. Medical exemptions are allowed, but we will have the the categories for masks required yeah. still. So I think that's that's pretty. Then it'll be good for both of these uh, main buildings that the town uses for for events and meetings and work. Let's not forget work. So. Good. I'll I'll draft something up, and you guys can take uh, it apart. Uh, Mike, Jen yeah. word in on this on this topic. Yep. Yeah. Say something. Excuse me. Yeah. Oh, did oh, did you want to yeah, say something? I wanted to say something. I am a high school student at Frontier Regional, and I am a waitress at the Waitley Diner, and I work all day, all night, in school and and out of school, mask and. I believe I shouldn't have to wear a mask if I'm fully vaccinated with the booster and everything. Yeah, that's right. That's what we're yeah, saying. That's what we're saying. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, thanks for um, sharing that though. That's sounds What's your awesome. name? <laughs> Are you My wearing mask? What's, What's your, your name? name? Cheyenne. Cheyenne. Cheyenne, okay. Yeah, yeah that, that's what we're doing. We're changing it to uh, an advisory. It's a, uh, what we're saying is it's a strong uh, recommendation, particularly for people who are um, immunocompromised or vulnerable or concerned but yeah thanks yeah. for sharing your experience mm -hmm. good okay good so this topic is done we'll go around let's move on to valley neighbors and um what else tobacco and vaping in schools <laughs> oh lord <laughs> it's small topics i don't know yeah becky wanted i mean mike and i yeah. are valley neighbors guys so you can we can pontificate all on this. No, we just. Yeah, yeah, I would well, love Becky, to. Becky, you want to just talk about yeah. it? Yeah, sure. Yeah, okay. I'll let. I will. I'll. I'll um, throw by you just um, the reason that I brought it up. So, mm -hmm. um, I guess two things, and um, Cheyenne might want to weigh in on this too. But um, uh, my um, I know people in town who are saying that. Vaping is ubiquitous. And okay, so wait, you were not doing Valley Neighbors? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I thought you asked me to no do Valley Neighbors too, first, please. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, tell me about it. Oh, is that what you wanted to know? Is that why you wanted to? Uh, oh, okay. yeah. I want, to hear, I want to hear about Valley Neighbors because it's a health thing. It's a strange coupling of Valley Neighbors and, <laughs> neighbors and vaping. Yes. <laughs> it's all on one line. All right, Valley Neighbors first, fine. Um, so we had a great orientation last night with seven new people, uh, volunteers coming on. 
Um, mm -hmm. Starting to provide services for people. And Fran, you have a lot more to, to add. Yeah. Yeah. Well, since we, and we can thank Chris for part of this, and did a nice article on Valley Neighbors. And um, we, as a result of that, and a, a three town mailing we did, and uh, um, a couple of blurbs in the South County newsletter and word of mouth, um, we've gotten over 40 some people interested in either volunteering or, and or becoming members just in the last couple, two and a half weeks. And um, we, as Mike said, we just had a, a volunteer training yesterday for the first batch of the new ones and uh, went very well. And people are eager to volunteer and there are many people are interested in getting some services too. So it's a, it's a soft launch that's really uh, booming. So, that's so suddenly, exciting. Uh, that is really yeah. Nice. yeah. What sort it's, of um, services are folks looking for? Transportation mostly to start. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Which is what we anticipated. Although with gardening season coming up, I can see uh, there are plenty of people who want a little help with gardens. Yeah. Uh, or that's, plants, plant something. So stay tuned. But um, yeah, we can still have a lot of we have a lot of work to do. Um, I, I, mean, I just had this fantasy thought, you guys. So mm -hmm. I'm I'm pretty obsessed with transportation and mm -hmm. with the idea of public transportation. Yeah. And I've been like tr trying to come up with some sort of pilot group of people who would participate in some kind of sort of guerrilla public transportation. And uh what we need is people who are a little flexible on time and are motivated um, and some kind of, and, and people who are willing to volunteer their time to do the transporting. And yeah. my real fantasy is that you do it, one does it with an electric vehicle. Okay. Um, yeah. so, but, I like yeah, the but, idea. And, and an electric vehicle is, that is painted beautiful colors so that it's very visible that says we are kicking ass because we are out here to solve climate change i think we're going to fundraise i think we're going to fundraise for a, a valley neighbors electric vehicle so we can do I, our transport <laughs> and, no, and, and the, idea. Idea would be, the idea would be not to very much focus on ways to um be very nimble with people's needs, but also have people sort of be willing to maybe be a little inconvenienced in that they would plan ahead so that yep. their trips would be clustered. You know what I yeah, mean? Well, yeah, well, that's we that's talk. part of Valley Neighbors. We we have a, you know, we want lead time so we can actually match people up. So mm -hmm. Becky, when you join officially. <laughs> yeah, I, I will, um, I, I'm sure you know I have this. I, I, let me enjoy it. Yeah, go ahead, Mike. A couple things I'd like to say. Um, transportation is a giant, it's a huge need. Um, mm -hmm. PT1 services that are in the valley are mm -hmm. um, really um, difficult to manipulate. You end mm -hmm. up having to go to your appointment, you know, 60 minutes ahead of time. Mm -hmm. um, your doctor runs over, so they came by to pick you up. Now you're going to have to wait another hour after the appointment. Mm -hmm. Uh, for mm -hmm. them to swing around again to get you. Uh, so PT1 is, is not a really good, but it's challenging also because yeah. that's the way medical appointments can go. Um, mm -hmm. That, you know, you've, you've been given a time and arrival and, you know, you've got to get people on time to their appointment. So it's challenging, but there is also funds out there um, for it. And so this could also be a revenue stream for Valley oh. Neighbors um, to really? look at through the state um, program, Life Path and other area, areas, um, senior services um, are looking for people who would like to provide these services. And, and I have another just, thought too. Another thing that we could do, and this may be too challenging, but it's still something to throw out there, is to somehow help people in, in, the, in the region coordinate their doctor appointments so that if they're going to the same place, they go at the same time. Uh, that's going to be a lot more. It might be <laughs> tough getting people to coordinate there, anything. You know? What we'd like to do is to get the two 
public regional transportation systems to coordinate. There's no stop and there's really no coordination between Pioneer Valley Transit Authority and Franklin County Transit Authority. In fact, we're in the middle of nowhere when it comes to these, basically. And that's a, a problem. Yeah, for sure. It's, it's yeah, tough. so. It's a tough, if it's, it's, it's tough and, and people I know who have tried to, um, uh, uh, you know, start up, um, you know, transportation services, it's, uh, you know, first off, there's the expense. Um, you know, generally, you have to have a wheelchair accessible vehicle. Um, and um, uh, if you're going to, you know, do a wide range of people, if you're only going to take people who can stand pivot transfer from a, you know, either wheelchair or just ambulate down uh, and be able to get in and out of the car, um, then you're limiting. Uh, there's people who won't be able to, you know, wheelchair bound folks uh, won't be able to. So, uh, but um, the big challenge, as I mentioned earlier, from us um, who've tried it before um, is is the timing of the appointments, that it just doesn't always go the way you want it to. Um, and so then you, the, the last thing you want to do is leave people hanging, but the only way to do it is to leave people hanging at their either, you know, putting yeah. them there too early or, or waiting late, yeah. being their way after the appointment's over. Yeah, and anyway, while- Challenging stuff, but that doesn't mean um, right. that we give up. Right. Mm -hmm. right, so let's tackle another easy issue like vaping. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, exactly. what you... I, right. I was yeah. not bringing this up because I thought we were going to come up with any kind of solution anytime soon. It was really more like I felt like this is our job. We should be talking about this because it's mm -hmm. like I say, so like it's ubiquitous. Mm -hmm. It's, mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, people, kids are addicted. And, and mm -hmm. I, um, uh, Vermont had a statewide call with, boy, about 50 people with senators and mm -hmm. um, advocates, you know, um, anti-tobacco advocates and um, health department and um, kids in high school and um, uh, a woman in college who were talking about the particular time right now, which is that, you know, COVID has created this incredible anxiety. And so people are, even more apt because they're using it as a coping mechanism. So there's all kinds of reasons why it's even worse than it was before two years ago. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. yeah. Are you aware that, you know, we have uh, some vaping regs? We, we actually have okay. uh, tobacco regulations that we passed yep. that may need some revisions given some of the um, vaping is going on I, I don't know it's just uh, yeah. eventually menthol and stuff like that is going to be flavoring flavored stuff is going to be banned um yeah. but um yeah anyway I think I, I think the the things I've thought about are that you know kids um kids don't necessarily know how ridiculously addictive this stuff is that I mean you can get addicted with one exposure so um, it's understanding that I think is an important message. And, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and also it's so clear that when kids do get to do things like sports and physical activity and fun things, they're much less likely to do this shit. So. Yeah. Well, we could have uh, this cause we're part of a tobacco control um, or whatever it's called. Uh, coalition that um, does our vape testing, uh, not vape testing, but tobacco monitoring and stores and selling and that. And part of that group, there's, and there's also a statewide group and they, there's a person who just goes around and does vape presentations and she's very good. And um, we could have her come too, if you wanted, uh, Mike, you're, if you wanted us to do, yeah. <laughs> Mike, just saying. Me. I mean, if you want to address it in some way, there's there's yeah. people out there and their materials out there, but it's a big issue. Excuse me, I'd actually like that to be addressed at the schools because I see younger classmen vaping all the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that should be addressed. Yeah, thank you for, so much for weighing in on at that. At the yeah. schools, yeah. So that, yeah. so that's one thing we could recommend. Yeah. So one thing, so I, I did some 
I'm not volunteering um, to do two presentations <laughs> at the schools. Let me start with that. Uh, uh, public speaking is not a huge fan. <laughs> not a huge fan. Um, but yeah, no, but that's one thing. One of the things that what they did at Tritown, because they did their, their own tobacco program in house, is they would go mm. to the schools and do presentations. And they're the, at the tobacco community, they're very active um, mm -hmm. statewide. Um, mm -hmm. but I, yeah. I think that would be a good idea, you know, to have them go to schools and yeah. you know, do presentations. Yeah. You're yeah, only going to get so many people, but yeah, yeah. 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 Well, every regional school should have it. I think, uh, have uh, that kind of presentation periodically <laughs> Yeah, for every, I mean, for every class. Yeah, yeah. For every class that goes through. Yeah. Um, kind of like Donald Duck in math and magic land. Mm -hmm. Well, I can get in touch with the person who I forget her name. You remember? Wait, her wait, name? wait, 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 wait. I'm well, sorry. I hate to interrupt. But yeah. I'm sorry. What was that reference? <laughs> oh, Mike. Yeah. Have any of you seen Donald Duck in math and magic land? I have not. Oh my God. Miss you, we used to see it every year. It's a, it's a math, uh, it's a, um, Walt Disney math, um, thing. And it's pretty funny. Anyway, I can't believe you haven't seen it. Wow. All right. So yeah, but you know, it's something to see every year. So like seeing these things every year could be good. Well, I can yeah. suggest that like in my kids old school, they actually had like, I want to call it like two resource officers like checking through and mm -hmm. having a periodic check on like school lockers and stuff like that mm -hmm. you know yeah. and they were yeah. taking stuff off out of the schools that way because most of the teenagers don't seem to want to hear what's really going on in the world with and a lot of them have parents consent which is not helpful you know mm -hmm. yeah. i know it's a tricky one it's a tricky yeah. one because they're truly addicted and yeah, but it's addictive. Mm -hmm. on, on the other hand, one of the best ways to reduce smoking has been to not allow it in public spaces. So, yeah. um, well, you know, we could look at our, like I said, our regs again and, yeah. and tighten them if needed and um, also look into having a school's presentation. Yeah, I like that without, idea. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. Um, now we got, got that done. T Mark, is there anything else? No. Foothills. So. We, um, we have a person that Mark can chime in there, but we're working on a personnel policy. Hopefully it will be done this week on Friday and have it sent off to a review. Um, the inspector hiring is pretty slow. Did you see that um, uh, thing that came out today from uh, Western Mass Public Health Association? They, there's an email that went around and it included uh, let me see, it included a uh, job description that they had posted and the only one um, for health director, but we should get, I thought we had one up there. We should. We did, I, I missed Feeney's email. That, uh -huh. So she emailed me yesterday and I had missed it. Oh, okay. Um, Cause she's the one that sent it out. She's, she wanted to, she's the one, yeah. Yeah, so I'll yeah, follow I, up with her and she can hopefully blast that, you know, maybe add something in. Or we can revise it. We did you know, get maybe. one person interested. I'm still waiting to hear back. Um, Legitimate? But, yeah, hmm. he used to, um, I forget what, the, I, but I haven't heard back. I left a message with him last week. I'll probably try to follow up again this week. Mm -hmm. um, I know that they used to do some other type of inspection. It escapes me at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, I think he used to do inspections for the Y, the YMCA. Mm -hmm. Regardless, mm -hmm. um, that's probably the real only interest we had. We did have another one, but they were a board member in another town. They didn't think they were qualified. I did email them back saying, hold up. <laughs> I mean, the, main, the main key we need here is, you know, the biggest part is the education. The rest of, you know, yeah. education, they want to stick around and personality mm -hmm. that, you know, meshes with everybody that works, that, yeah. you know, their team yeah, player, yeah. et cetera. That's the, you know, those are the biggest thing. Everything else you can learn. Mm -hmm. Well. Let's see what happens. Yeah, if it gets gets actually in there, it might be nice too. Um, anyway, is there any, uh, uh, how do you feel about uh, Mrs. Reed, by the way, that we just uh, hashed out? <laughs> so just to give you guys, I did email her twice last week and talked to her on the phone repeatedly asking for a timeline. I have yet to receive one. Mm -hmm. Of course, okay. So is there any other Foothills stuff that we should be talking about? Um, I had sent Mark different pictures and stuff. I'm sure Mark's took pictures of stuff in this house. 
Yeah. Um, so that way you guys can see, like I was trying to make sure y'all understood earlier is that I had left for a two month period even to take and have a, uh, her a chance, mm -hmm. ouch, chance to- um, We got that. Up. Yeah, you know, that was she, clear. She, yeah, we understand. Like, she is a difficult. What do you mean? And I hate that, but I'm like, I have no choice at this point to go forward with a lawyer. Like I was telling Mark, I've been so leanly pushing it off, hmm. trying and trying because I'm not that type of person. But well, you wouldn't be the first uh, tenant that's taken her <laughs> to court. Believe me, <laughs> we've had. And I, uh, did, I, I did some address to Mark to give her and then Mark here obviously to suggest that maybe giving her a, not just timelines like march 15th by this has to be done by you know type thing but if it wasn't by a certain day that she'll know that there's a condemnation that's going to end up happening or something you know or, because, or court I'm or sorry. court right well by a certain date though because obviously she keeps pushing it off and when she's telling people like earlier that oh i'm not letting her in i'm so much of letting her in it ain't funny mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the well, one time that she wanted to show up i'm sorry that we were sick we were literally vomiting all night so you know, you wanted i told her she could come in but she was like no you guys probably got covid yeah. <laughs> you know you guys just keep just keep in communication with Mark on this, okay? Yeah, so we I know. I think we're, we're okay. Um, anything yeah, else? Yeah, I would just like to add, uh, Mark, that um, I think um, we need to ask Mrs. Reed to follow the guidelines that exist for when to or um, notify a tenant of um, a, a need for a, a visit. Um, and that's not 15 minutes like she did the other day. That's no, I've had multiple conversations with her about that. Um, okay. She, if in, not on, not for Jen, but she complained about the other side um, and not mm -hmm. them not responding and not letting her in, et cetera. I suggested to her that um, put a, you know, give them at least 24 hours notice, you know, 48 hours is better. Um, mm -hmm. The more time you give somebody, the better, you know, regardless post it on the door, put it on the door, take a picture of it. That way um, we have it documented. Because if the tenant is not being cooperative, then, mm -hmm. you know, that's a violation on their end. But yeah. you need to, you know, you know, the code doesn't have a specific date. It says reasonable, you know, notification. Yeah. So, you know, anyways, regardless, I bet, you know, she knows that she's supposed to give them, you know, at least 24 hours. Yeah, right. Good. So, is there anything else tonight you guys want to talk about? Should we meet next time in person, or we just keep going? I love this. <laughs> and the remote is good for a while. It's awesome. It works perfect for me, so I don't have to drive. Yeah, no, 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 it's good. Exactly. And we have, like I said, at least through July fifteenth. So, cool. Well, we'll see you all uh, Bye, somewhere all. soon. Thanks, Bye. Jane. Thank you. Bye. Take care, Bye. Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah.